and spy is very bad. And uh, your case is death completely, sentence. 1997 was a dark year for Uganda. In February, Archbishop Janan Luum, International Affairs Minister Charles Obothofumbi, Inspector General of Police, Lieutenant Kano Erinayo Oriemma, and a number of other people were arrested on suspicion of treason, tried and convicted. And if he is found to be spy, his case is a firing squad. He must be handed straight to military police must be dealt with the military tribunal. Among those arrested were 15 former and active government officials. One of them was Daniel Nsereko, the assistant commissioner of police. His brother, 76-year-old Peter Nsereko Mwanga, is a former bodyguard of Sir Edward Mutesa. He also served in the Special Forces Unit. Mwanga says that when both of Fumbi and Irinai Oriema were arrested, his family advised Nsereko to go into exile. But he refused, maintaining his innocence. He was arrested in his office. I was in the office of the state research. I was in the office of the state research. I was in the office of the state research. I was in the office of the state research. I was in the office of Era musero yeni tibadja kutu sako buzivu. Musero yeni ni muganda umuwa mwetu wa musibide mwetu njoo kuteka. Mwanga spent the first night with his brother in the cell at the State Research Bureau headquarters and left in the morning. The suspects were tried by the military tribunal headed by Lieutenant Colonel Juma Butabika at City Hall. They were finally convicted on September 7th and transferred to Luzira prisons. Mwanga, who was at that time the prison's chief electrician, switched off the facility's electricity supply so that he could have another chance to see his brother. Yali mugumu nyo ne musanga nga liye chifiche nkoko, akatu mbuguru. Kakati enaruma, alinaka yimba ke ya yimba nga. Kato ndo simbizi ku. Kuti makayimba kuburiwe nkuri ya jana kaba. Kumpina we. Nsereko urged his brothers to attend his execution at 3 p.m. on September 9th at Clock Tower, where the Osafi Market toilets now stand. He told them he would raise his hands so that they could identify him. Kaba musiba kantu kani. Amasasi makumi ya asatu. Niga mkuba. Nga antwa nebine. Pipe yyo. Ba teka mwomu senyu nga mulimu amazia. Amasasi kare meku furuma. Bindu bisa mkabe. Pia. Nagendo kura vangu mtuwe. Mwanga says the dead men were buried in a mass grave at the Makishon Bay Farm in Luzira prisons. Mayor Police. 74-year-old Mary Anyuru was working with Bank of Uganda. At the time, her husband, Abdallah Anyuru, the former chairman of the Public Service Commission, was executed on September 9th in 1977. In 1970, Anyuru had helped a young Yoweri Museven get a job in President Milton Obote's office. On the fateful day, after a cup of evening tea, Anyuru left his home in Naguru Flats at 6 p.m. in the company of his friend, Ongom. They were heading to a bar. It was getting late that day, and I was a bit worried. And I said, ah, Mr. used not to move a lot, and not till night, like this late night. By now he would have come back. Two days later, the soldiers who had kidnapped her husband returned with him to search their home. Some of them were harassing me, and they were telling me, tell us where all the documents are. Tell us. And I was tortured. Anyway, among the clothes, they, they took a piece of paper. So the paper they took, anyway, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. During the trial of the Archbishop Janan Luwum at the Nile mansions in Kampala, Anyuru read out the letter that was used as evidence against Luwum. Meanwhile, some government officials comforted Anyuru's wife during the time he was in custody.
one army officer gave her 60,000 shillings in cash. This is equivalent to 28 million shillings today. She last spoke to her husband on the day he was convicted. Looking, wondering. Mrs. Anyuru and her five children did not attend her husband's execution. Today, she lives a quiet life in Kampala, in a house President Museveni gave the family. Maria Teresa Kabanda's life rotates around her small farm in Entebbe and her deep faith. Every afternoon at 3 p.m., she joins a group of women to recite the rosary. The 71-year-old mother of four is the widow of Joseph Kabanda, who was the commandant of Entebbe International Airport. Kabanda disappeared one year after the July 1976 raid on Entebbe by Israeli commandos. <laughs> On June 28, 1977, at about 10.15 p.m., Kabanda and the Entebbe Airport at Enokara Masheshe were carjacked and kidnapped near Lido Beach. Kabanda's secretary, Margaret Nabankema, and staff in the VIP lounge signed an affidavit saying Kabanda left the airport at 10 p.m. Na yungu vanyo mabaga amanti, between Vete ni Rido Beach, katibali ya babu mtuwara, babu jamune, babu jamune, babu teka mbutu yawe, Katoli na avuga pasati moyali. Mrs. Kabanda, who was a telephone exchange supervisor at the airport, solicited help from high-ranking soldiers in vain. His body was never found. These people are among the many who have never found closure over the loss of their loved ones. They simply picked up the pieces and have continued with their lives as best as they can. Gillian Nantume, NTV. Oh,